Hello everyone, my name is Mike and here at Tech Carmoon we uncover tech at home and in video. So hit that subscribe button if you want to see more. But today I'm going to be answering one of the biggest questions I might have got so far. Which one should I get? The MacBook Air 2020 or the newly released MacBook Pro 2020? So let's uncover it right now. No joke, I've got this question on pretty much every platform I do and I want to answer your question in this video. So I'm going to go through some things like specs to start with, then I'm going to go through which MacBook you should go for depending on your needs and what upgrades I would recommend. So please give this video a like because I put a lot of effort into this one. I will try to cover all the bases here and this is based on my experience with the 2019 MacBook Pro which is basically the same as the MacBook Pro 2020 but obviously with the 2020 having a better keyboard and double the storage. Also I have the MacBook Air 2020, the i5 model to be specific and I know this laptop personally so I think I've got enough knowledge to help you. Now the models that I will be talking about will be the base MacBook Air with the i5 processor upgrade and the base MacBook Pro as firstly they're pretty much closely priced and these are the models that you guys have been asking me to compare. I will talk about which upgrades you should uh, do on each model but I will also talk about upgrades that you shouldn't do so hopefully this video will answer pretty much most of your questions. Starting with the screen, both have this beautiful 13.3 inch display and both have basically the same screen. However, the MacBook Pro has got the wide P3 color gamut, which means that it can display more colors than the MacBook Air. However, the MacBook Air does display between 95 to 98% of the sRGB color space. So if you are a casual photo editor, don't be turned off by the MacBook Air. One nice thing is that the MacBook Pro does have an extra 100 nits of brightness, meaning that if you work outside a lot, then the MacBook Pro would be the better display to work on. They both unfortunately have the same webcam, but both models do have fantastic microphones and great speakers. The MacBook Pro is only slightly better in this department in my opinion, but trust me, you'll be fine with either one for voice calls and watching videos. In terms of weight, the MacBook Air obviously wins here, as you probably already know, but if you want to know the exact numbers, the Air is 110 grams lighter or 0.3 pounds lighter. If you carry around your laptop, let's say from class to class, this weirdly does make a bit of a difference, but only marginal. When it comes to thickness, the MacBook Air has this wedge shape, which means it's a bit thicker at its thickest point than the MacBook Pro, but it's actually much thinner than the MacBook Pro at its thinnest point. What this means is that the keyboard on the MacBook Air is slightly slanted, so the keyboard feels marginally nicer to type on, but this is me being very picky between the two. Speaking of keyboards, both have basically the same keyboard. However, the MacBook Pro has this thing called the touch bar. This is gonna be subjective as some people love the touch bar, some people absolutely hate the touch bar, and some people find it a little bit useful. For me personally, I don't think it adds or takes away any value from the MacBook Pro. I like using both types of uh, keyboards, but I wouldn't base my buying choice on, let's say, one not having the touch bar. The trackpad is also the same, both are large and nice to use. So let's get into the tricky part of this comparison, which is the eighth generation processor on the MacBook Pro versus the 10th generation processor on the MacBook Air with the corresponding graphics units, obviously. So the MacBook Pro has the eighth generation i5 processor, which is clocked at 1.4 gigahertz at its base and can turbo up to 3.9 gigahertz and has the Intel Iris Plus 645 graphics while the MacBook Air has the 1.1 gigahertz i5 processor and that can turbo up to 3.5 gigahertz and this also has the newer G7 graphics. Both are quad-core processors, however, when you are looking at the specs, you might think, well, the MacBook Pro sounds like it has a dated CPU and dated graphics, so obviously the Air wins. And you're kind of right, unless you do sort of certain tasks. And there is also a limitation, obviously, on the MacBook Air. This is where I'm gonna start my recommendations, so sit tight. Firstly, if you've got a laptop from, let's say, more than sort of five or six years ago, and your tasks haven't changed from doing things like web browsing or watching videos or using document or spreadsheets, then the MacBook Air will serve you well in this department. 
trust me. If you are a college or high school student who is looking for a MacBook that will be able to write out their homework or dissertations and have multiple tabs for doing those tasks like for research or whatever and like to watch videos and listen to music then you can do this on the MacBook Air as well. Also if you want to create the odd video of let's say your holiday or a trip on iMovie or some light photo editing for example, then the MacBook Air is for you as it has enough power for both of those tasks and the screen is colour accurate enough for that stuff, especially if you're posting it for social media. If you are looking for a computer that can be used for casual coding and you're not doing sort of complex compiling and if you're looking to let's say edit 1080p footage with very little effects and colour grading on Final Cut Pro then the MacBook Air will work for you as well. Now this is on the edge a bit but for short bursts of these sort of heavy tasks and for let's say editing three to four minute videos and exporting it the MacBook Air with the i5 will work for you. The reason why is that the MacBook Air can and turbo up for short moments to help the CPU performance, meaning that you should get a smoother experience. And yes, the fans may ramp up every now and again, but they will ramp down as quickly as they do ramp up. The reason why I say this is that the MacBook Air 2020 has got actually better single core performance than the MacBook Pro. So for you guys, this is gonna be important. Also, the potential price and weight saving is gonna be better for you too, for your use cases. The thermals will not be limiting for your tasks. And to be honest, if you are coming from, let's say a 2017 MacBook Air, then this upgrade will be great for you. Now, should you upgrade to the 16 gigabytes of RAM or upgrade the storage on the MacBook Air? Well, answer this. If you are planning to keep your laptop for a very long time, let's say for three, four years plus, Plus, then go for the 16 gigabytes of RAM if you've got the money. But for storage, I mean, for the upgrade, it's a little bit steep for anything more than 512 gigabytes. And to be fair, the 256 gigabyte option is more than enough for some. My recommendation is actually to get a nice USB-C external drive like the Samsung T5. The T5 is fast and affordable and if you spend about 80 pounds, you can get a 512 gigabyte SSD, which is plenty for the future. If you're going to store, let's say, a lot of files locally, then upgrade the storage, but otherwise the external SSD will suit you fine. Now, if you are planning on doing video editing, and when I mean video editing, I mean making more than two or three videos a month in either 4K or 1080p with moderate effects and multiple layers, then go for the MacBook Pro. If you are an experienced coder or compile a lot of code, then also go for the MacBook Pro. If you are also an experienced photo editor and work with or want to work with high resolution images and need the absolute best quality screen, then go for the MacBook Pro. This is going to serve you well. The reason why I say this is that the MacBook Pro's thermals are better for sustained workloads than the MacBook Air, as the cooling solution is better, meaning that you will stay closer to its turboed speeds. So even though it is an old processor and graphics unit, the MacBook Pro can boost at a higher speed for longer, whereas the MacBook Air will drop to its base clock over extended sessions. The multi-core scores in the benchmarks on the Pro are higher than what's found on the Air. And because of the better cooling solution, the graphics card can be utilized a little bit better than the MacBook Air. And the MacBook Pro is just designed for these types of tasks. Now, what if you're the type of person to keep their laptop for five or more years? Is the eighth generation processor going to limit you after the fifth, sixth, seventh year? Well, between sort of 2013 and 2014, I believe they had the same processor or generation of processor. And this argument happened back then. And you know what? Both models, even after five slash six years, are still performing well. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. Yes, it's not ideal. I would have liked to have seen a 10th generation processor in the base model, just like you guys, don't get me wrong. But personally, it's not something that it would stop me from uh, buying this model. Also, spend the extra 100 pounds on the 16 gigabytes of RAM as Firstly, this is a good deal and it makes sense as you're going to find more performance for that extra £100 than anything else for that same or similar money. Also, in 
five, six, seven years, you're gonna really thank me for that 16 gigabytes because especially on, let's say, a slightly older hardware, this is gonna matter a lot more than, let's say, LPDDR4 memory, which is only at eight gigabytes, let's say. Now, what are my opinions on the other upgrades? Well, I've got a few thoughts on this. So I personally wouldn't upgrade the CPU to the i7 on either of the models as the price to performance in the real world isn't worth the money. Also, on the base model of the MacBook Pro, if you decide to upgrade the RAM and the SSD, then please just spend another £200 and go for the £1,800 model as you are getting much better value for money for the extra £200 on top of the upgrades. But I understand, obviously, and spending another £200 on an already expensive MacBook might not be in the cards. I want to say that specs are one thing, but the way that each MacBook handles its specs is far more important. Yes, LPDDR4 memory is better than LPDDR3 memory. And yes, the 10th generation processors are better than the 8th generation processor. But the MacBook Air doesn't unlock its performance in sustained workloads. So the 8th generation with its LPDDR3 RAM performs better under load because it has got better cooling. Now, I've said some very hard and fast recommendations here. and. Like with anything, every case is unique, but I know a lot of you wanted to know my opinion. And like I said, these are my opinions. And if I was in these positions that I've mentioned, then these are the choices that I would personally make. Now, I'm not saying that I'm 100% right. And I know that some of you are gonna tell me that I'm wrong. And I hope I've justified myself though in you understanding my thought process in giving these recommendations. But there we have it. As always, leave a comment down below on whether you agree or disagree with any of my points and please be kind down there, all right? Also, check out the links in the description below to support the channel. If you haven't already, please follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Tech Carmoon. Also, drop me a like on this video if you've enjoyed it. Hit the subscribe button if you wanna see more. Also, watch some of these videos if you want to see more of myself as well. Anyway, everyone, stay safe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.